Kim Paul. He's the president and chief operating officer of New Energy Corp in South Bend, Indiana. New Energy Corp was the first large-scale greenfield ethanol plant built in the United States. Started in 1984, it is scheduled to produce its 2 billion gallon of fuel this year. Welcome, sir. You have five minutes uh, to make your, uh, present your testimony. Good afternoon, Madam Chairwoman and Ranking Member Graves and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Nathan Kimple, and as the uh, Chairwoman said, I am President and Chief Operating Officer of New Energy Corp. New Energy is located in South Bend, Indiana and became operational in 1984. And uh, we are, in fact, getting ready this year to produce our two billionth gallon. Um, in, new, in, 19, in, 19, in 2008, New Energy purchased over $180 million worth of corn from local farmers, cooperative elevators, and commercial grain companies. As you have already said, this is an important and timely hearing and I am pleased to be here to discuss the unique challenges and economic difficulties currently facing New Energy Corp and the U.S. renewable fuels industry. Today's renewable fuel industry con consists of 170 biorefineries located in 26 different states with the capacity to produce 12.4 billion gallons of high-octane clean-burning motor fuel. Uh, in 2008, the renewable fuels industry operating capacity increased by 2.7 billion gallons, a 34 percent increase. The U.S. renewable fuels industry is a dynamic and growing industry that is revitalizing rural America, reducing emissions in our nation's cities, and lowering our dependence on imported petroleum. Ethanol has become an essential, an essential component of the U.S. motor fuels market. Today, ethanol is blended in approximately 70 percent of our nation's fuel and is sold virtually from coast to coast and border to border. Well, last year, the U.S. renewable fuels industry produced and sold a record 9.2 billion gallons, contributing significantly to the nation's economic and environmental energy security. The U.S. ethanol industry continues to have a positive impact on our nation's economy. U.S. ethanol producers have long been on the cutting edge of the green economy helping support more than 494,000 well-paying jobs in 2008 alone. Importantly, ethanol production provides a critical stimulus for struggling rural economies, providing farmers and the most important value-added market for grains in more than a generation. The economic crisis is significantly impacting sustained, continued growth and development in our industry. Recently, the U.S. renewable fuels industry has been devastated by the scarcity of both short-term credit to finance ongoing operations, much less the long-term capital to finance expansion and new construction. The renewable fuels industry, along with all of our small business partners, the American corn farmer, have fallen victim to many of the same problems that have affected other industries, including high raw material costs but in our case, collapsing oil and gasoline prices. Ethanol prices are partly driven by gasoline prices, which are in turn driven by crude oil prices. Many input costs for producing corn are as well driven by crude oil prices. Both gasoline and crude oil reached record levels in 2008. Crude oil prices skyrocketed to $147 per barrel before sinking to below $40. According to the Energy Information Agency, gasoline use fell an estimated 3.3 percent in 2008, the sharpest decline since 1992, as prices hit record levels. Oil led the 2008 commodity boom and corn prices followed. Oil prices have fallen due in large, in part to a weak demand from a, a slowing world economy. Falling gasoline prices have pulled ethanol down as well, putting severe pressure on revenue. However, gasoline and ethanol prices have fallen much more than corn prices over the last year. In our company, we look at a concept called the commodity price spread. This is essentially the difference between the daily market replacement prices of ethanol and corn expressed in a dollar per gallon basis. In January of 2008, the commodity price sped spread was enough to cover all production and debt service costs, plus make a reasonable contribution to return on investment. However, by July, the commodity price spread had narrowed to a point 
where an average or model plant was perhaps covering all variable cost and making a contribution to semi-variable cost, but likely not covering the fixed cost of operation, much less debt service. Since July, the commodity price spread has vacillated between not even covering variable cost to making a contribution to fixed cost, but rarely, if ever, making any contribution to debt service. Our projection for the balance of the year, solely based on futures market for corn and ethanol, show little improvement. Corn input costs are established as much as a year before cash sales by the farmer actually takes place. Our suppliers tell us at today's market price they are well below their production price. Unless agricultural production costs drop substantially this year, the price squeeze between corn and ethanol may well continue into next crop year. The RFS for 2009, which is effectively 9.5 billion gallons after imports and prior year credits are taken off, is now not only the floor of demand, but also the ceiling of demand. Today, more than 25 ethanol plants have closed nationwide, idling nearly 2 billion gallons of capacity. The outlook for New Energy Corp. in the U.S. ethanol industry will depend on several factors, including economic growth, which is consumer spending and gasoline demand, credit availability, oil and gasoline prices. We need to assure the continued viability of the industry as it stands today, as well as provide for future evolution and innovation while stimulating thousands of green jobs. To do this, access to immediate and necessary operating capital is critically important to help weather the current economic conditions facing the industry. U.S. ethanol producers have answered the challenge to put forth, put forth in the RFS and are producing enough ethanol to fill the requirements, and I might add, for both this year and next year. 